Inside Michigan Football is presented by Meyer. Hi, everybody. Michigan demolishes Maryland in College Park, Maryland, 59-18 the final. I'm Jim Branstetter along with John Jansen, two-time uh, captain at Michigan and, of course, national champion player. And it's great to have you along with us after this victory. And, John, you want to talk about winning a football game and a game that was important to win because it sets up the next week. Everybody called it a trap game. Michigan didn't treat it like a trap game. No, Michigan has – acted differently all season long and we've talked about these key moments it was going into halftime at Wisconsin it was trailing in Nebraska there are a number of times trying to come back after a loss to Michigan State a number of times where this team could have said you know what we tried it didn't work out and they keep coming back they keep doing things differently and today coming out the business trip they took care of business and 28 points in the third quarter that was Going into halftime, you knew that this game was, it wasn't in hand, but it was a game that they, they, they were doing very well and were going to win. But you set the tone in that third quarter of 28 points. That's a statement. The other thing about it, too, is it started a little slowly. Offensively, they were a little bit slow getting going. Defensively, Maryland moved the ball. Now, Maryland's a good offensive football team with Tunga Vailoa as a quarterback. He's the Big Ten's leading passer. But what Michigan did was figured it out, adjusted, and then – the other thing I think we have to mention about first half, when you win football games, players make plays. We always say it, right? Well, Andrew Anthony and Mike Sanderstow made plays, made plays that were spectacular, and that's what you need to win, and it takes momentum away from the other guy, and I think that's one of the big parts of the first half lead that Michigan got against Maryland here. Well, and you mentioned the struggles. They went three and out. They received the ball first. They went three and out. They had basically run into the middle of the line. Nothing was there. They come out on the second drive and they start to attack the edges a little bit more. They set the edge with the tight ends. I thought Andrew Stuber had a really good game of, of blocking on the edge as well. And then you have those individual efforts. When you have a championship football team, yeah, you got to do all the little things right. And the standard is we can run the football. They found a way to do that, but they also found a way with Andrew Anthony, Mike Sandra still on the defensive side of things, DJ Turner, of making a play at the right moment to change the course of how things were going. And the thing is defensively, Tug of ILO was a difficult out in the sense that he's got the ability to move around. Well, they didn't get a lot of sacks like they did against Penn State. The key is they forced him off his spot. You mentioned it during the game and during the broadcast. You force him off his spot, force him to move his feet. He's not going to be as accurate. And on occasion, there were plays that Maryland could have made. They couldn't because Tunga Vailo couldn't make the throw because his feet were moving. He was off his spot. They hurried him. Even though they had open receivers, he wasn't accurate. No, he wasn't. And when, as an as a offense, you've got to game plan to up, go up-tempo. You've got a game plan to have quick passes. You've got to do those things. It limits what you can do offensively. And this team, by putting pressure on them, by putting points on the board, Michigan did today, by continuing to put pressure on him as a passer, you limit what they can do. And the other thing that the Michigan defense had to do, and they did in the first half, you, you can't allow them to run the ball. If you make them two-dimensional, then Maryland's offense becomes that much more difficult. They stopped the run pretty much cold and forced Tunga Vailoa to win the game, and then that's when the pressure got them. And, you know, you look at the job that this defense did against Jahan Dotson last week, against Rakeem Jarrett this week. Now the big challenge comes next week when you've got three of them on the same field at the same time. That's going to be a big challenge. That's Michigan Ohio State. We'll get to that in a little bit. Right now, we're going to throw it to a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the second half, especially the third quarter, which was unbelievable. Offense, defense, special teams, you name it, the third quarter had it. That's coming up next on Inside Michigan Football. Back to throw. Pressure coming. He throws the ball. Right corner of the end zone. Is that oh. caught? Mike Sainristel with an unbelievable one-handed grab. Touchdown, Michigan! We came here and handled the assignment. Um, you know, the focus all week was focus on Maryland. We have uh, <clears throat> another good opponent, no matter who it is. Um, and really, that's all we want to do is just come out here and win this game. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. And by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store. Petrino moves toward the football and he will kick it away. This is a short pop-up kick. Michael Barrett will take it at the 21 and he will throw it 
over to his other man. That's Aiden, A.J. Henning. Henning's got a wide open sideline. He's down the sideline to the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Michigan. A special teams play. Good for 79 and a score. How about that, Apples? We had it up all week, and we knew if they, if they gave us a chance, it was going to be a huge play. And, you know, I'm just looking, and they alerted it that it, it was coming, and then they kicked it right to Mike B, and I was like, oh, it's on. And as soon as I caught the ball, he threw, he threw a great ball. He threw a great ball. And then as soon as I caught it, I had a bunch of space, ran right up the sideline. It was, it was awesome. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. Jim Branston along with John Jansen. 59-18, Michigan demolishes Maryland. Here in Maryland, it's their last road game of the regular season. John Jansen, the third quarter of this football game is when Michigan really won it and put it away and just took Maryland completely out of it. And the interesting thing is, Donovan Edwards, the young freshman, he's supposed to be the running back. He's supposed to be the guy that is there with Hassan Haskins and Blake Corman. Instead, he turns into a receiver, and he goes 10 catches, 170 yards, career best. And that extra ability for him to show that I'm diverse enough, I can be a receiver and a runner, boy, he gives the defense a lot to think about, doesn't he? Well, he sure does. And not only was it a, a season best for him, a career best, but it's a record by a Michigan running back in terms of 170 yards. So a terrific performance. But when uh, you know you have the opportunity and you have the skill set of a running back and you have the ability to catch the ball like he does, when you get in the open field, you become very dangerous. And one of the things that I thought was outstanding was when he caught his 77-yard touchdown pass, not only did he you know make a good catch, and sometimes they get so anxious that they'll drop some of those easy easy catches. He has the awareness to cut it back and then the speed to run away from that Maryland secondary. It's been a long time since we've seen a running back with that type of speed. And the other thing about it, we've talked about this. This is one of those coach speak moments. When you win a game, you say there are three phases, offense, defense, special teams. Well, in the third quarter, Michigan showed all three and they won all three in that third quarter, which ultimately put the game away. The special teams, after Maryland scored, to kind of crawl their way back in it and gain some momentum, Michigan comes up with a trick special teams kick return. And again, it was a pooch kick. They anticipated it, and they had a play for it that worked perfectly, a 78-yard kick return touchdown on a lateral pass from Michael Barrett. Thing of beauty. It, it was absolutely beautiful. And the thing is, is that they were prepared. They knew coming into this game, a couple of times a game, Maryland would have a kick like that. When, they, when it happened, it was already called. They adjusted on the fly. Michael Barrett caught the ball, threw it back to A.J. Henning. A great pass by a former quarterback, no less. And then the, the, the path to the end zone was wide open. Now, A.J. Henning did a great job of getting to the sideline, getting upfield, and, and you know obviously running 78 yards. But the awareness of the team. And you know Coach pointed out, too, Trent A. Jones rolling downfield yeah. as a big man in that in that return. The other thing, we talked about the offense with Donovan Edwards. We talked about uh, the special teams with that kick return. Now we talk defense. Again, you force Tunga Vailoa out of the pocket. He's off his spot. He tries to make a play. It turns into a defensive pick six by DJ Turner. All three phases contribute in the third quarter to blow the game open. Yeah, and you know, DJ Turner had the one interception earlier in the year, got tripped up barely, thought he was going to get a pick six on that one. It came true tonight. They obviously reviewed it, came back that it was, he did stay in bounds. But you know, when you look at what this defense was able to do, if you can get Talia Tungavailoa off his mark, not just because he's rolling out, they're trying to change the launch point, but when he's in the pocket and you can force him out, his eyes. He doesn't see the defense like he does when he's in the pocket. And that's typical of a, of, of a quarterback, but it's, it's been especially costly for him this year, and it cost him again tonight. It all translated into a 59-18 blowout victory for the Wolverines. What a happy locker room. Uh, these kids are ready to go because next week's pretty big game. Let's go to Ed Ken Gershke in the Michigan locker room with the happy Wolverines. This team was very focused on this week, and we were very – um, our mentality was great, and I'm just happy that all phases of the ball were able to contribute to this win. Just coming out here, doing what we had to do, getting a lot of guys involved. Those are the best team wins. When everybody gets involved, everybody gets a chance to play, make plays, and it, it, it's a great feeling. We're always just trying to complete the game, play a complete game, four quarters, um, and finish every play in a dominant position. And um, I think that that, that happened today. It was a great uh, team win. I, th I thought we played very good complimentary football. 
Um, you know, it was a hard game to focus on with, uh, you know, Ohio State this upcoming week, but I think we dialed it in, we focused, and we got the win. Still to come, John Jansen chats with head coach Jim Harbaugh, and we'll have our Elro Steel Man of the Week. Stay with us through the break. Today's conversation with Jim Harbaugh is brought to you by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Coach, 59-18, business trip. You guys took care of business. Sure did. Uh, scored in all three phases. That was tremendous. Uh, Matt, Matt Torrey really got us going on special teams with the block punt early. And then uh, big, huge kickoff return for a touchdown by A.J. Henning. He also had a big punt return early in the game where he got it across the uh, their side of the field. Uh, great throw by Mike Barrett. Uh, I thought the huge play, plays of the day, uh, DJ Turner with the interception, that was very, very timely, uh, getting them stopped and then getting that defensive touchdown the way we did. Um, and the other guy, uh, I mean, a lot of guys, a lot of guys that played so well. Donovan Edwards, you really have to highlight him. Um, set a record for receiving yards by a Michigan running back. And uh, you talk to Donovan Edwards and just doing his job, you know. Um, but I could tell he was going to cut that back even before he did. And, and I'll make a prediction. I mean, yeah, it's a record. It was a great game. But that'll, that'll be a blip on the, uh, on the career of Donovan Edwards. I mean, he's destined for great things. And some great individual efforts. Great catch by Andrew Anthony early on. Mike Sand was still a great catch. Um, just the individual efforts that you saw from some guys. Yeah, I think Kate had a magnificent game. JJ, uh, you know, that touchdown throw to Mike Sanders still was was perfectly thrown. I mean, really seeing JJ do the things that he does in practice and and take it to taking it to the game with discipline reads and even even uh, the touchdown throw was an audible uh, that he made. So uh, uh, and he ran the ball really well. So many guys. I mean, there's so many guys, even in so many backup positions. And uh, great to see Will Rolap get a get a tremendous catch and. And TJ Guy, you know, get a sack and almost had two. Um, you can go up and down the list. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson uh, again, really good. Offensive line, I thought was was uh, spectacular. Uh, they, I mean, they blitzed us 33 out of the first 37 snaps, and um, protection got better and better as the game went on. And uh, Cade was making them pay, you know, for uh, for some of those blitz blitz looks. And yeah, some most, I mean, most, most everything uh, really good for us today. The Michael Barrett to AJ Henning on the kickoff return was that called? Were you anticipating something short, or is that just one that's dialed up when it is kicked short? Uh, Jay Harbaugh game plan that, and the uh, and JB Brown and uh, Brad Banta. I mean, that's that's something that they had uh, they had cooked up all week. We watched it being practiced all all week. Um, we're just first time that they, first time that they had kicked a, the sky kick, the cross field kick, which uh, you know, they do a couple times a game. Uh, we decided the first time they did that, we were gonna run the throwback. So that was that was kind of a audible on the move, but uh, it was it was designed, dialed dialed up. Uh, great job, Trent a. Jones. Uh, when people go back and look at look at the play of him blocking on that, uh, I mean. It's an offensive tackle out there leading the way. I mean, he was really rolling. Uh, the message to the team in the locker room, you guys control your own destiny. There's one regular season game left. What was the message to the team about this week and what it means? Well, right where we uh, want to be. And uh, now we'll get everything uh, prepared to finish. This has been, it's been a season long, I mean, a year long of uh, uh, preparing for, for this game. And now we have the the week of preparation and you know, we'll be uh, anticipate be high energy and it'll be time to go. How much fun is this week going to be knowing that the Big Ten East is on the line a trip to Indy uh, the college football playoffs. I mean everything is on the line and this team has earned the right to, to play for it. Yeah well uh, you know the dream has been to, to win it yeah. and uh, win the Big Ten championship and you know, these 11 games have put us in the position uh, you know to make that uh, Make that true. So uh, every, all our focus will be on making that come to life. Uh, congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Back to throw McNamara. Look, he's got Donovan Edwards on the wheel route at the midfield stripe. Edwards brings it back diagonally across the field to the 30. Can he outrun him at the 5? Touchdown, Michigan. Donovan Edwards. What a play. What a throw. And Michigan. 
Michigan, just like that, strikes for 77 yards. I just had to show up, um, you know, uh, where I was needed. Uh, I'm just very grateful that um, I had the opportunity to, you know, get in the game, showcase my talent. But uh, just like all credit to like off, uh, offensive coordinator uh, Coach Gaddis and uh, Coach Hart for believing in me. He's rolling out of the pocket, getting pressured. Now he rolls back to the left, throws. That ball is intercepted. DJ Turner has it. He's returning it to the ten, the five. He's in the end zone. I saw the ball, I saw him roll out, kind of baited him into throwing it, and I couldn't get tackled this time. I couldn't get tackled. Were you pretty certain you were getting in the end zone? Oh yeah, no, once I caught the ball, I knew I, no way I'm getting tackled. <laughs> time now for our Al Rose Steel Man of the Week. Here's Ed Ken Gersky. Cade McNamara has handled the pressures of playing quarterback at a place like Michigan with a skillful hand and a clear mind. From dealing with a social media world focused on style points and instant feedback to weekly media inquiries about his backup, J.J. McCarthy. Pressure or noise and stuff regarding my position, um, me personally, is something that I've dealt with before. And I think um, those reps that I had at a young age um, at the beginning of my high school career um, was something that prepared me for this. Prepared him, but it was anything but easy. During that time in my life, it was very difficult and I didn't know how to deal with it. But now that I've gone through it and I've matured as a player and become more confident in myself, I think it's not that difficult for me to deal with anymore. And I think it's something that, you know, I kind of expect to come with the job. Cade says he also benefited from watching former Wolverine, Shea Patterson. I just saw it happened before it was my time to deal with it. And I think that it's just something that comes with the job. And, you know, that's a part about being quarterback. If you, you're gonna sign up for the praise when things are going good, but, you know, you also sign up for the criticism as well. I asked Kate if that gives him energy, and he said it definitely fuels you as a competitor. And he says it makes you wanna go out and play as perfect a game as you can. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Ed Kingerski. Let's go back to November 20th, 1999. After trailing the Buckeyes for most of the game, Michigan rallied from a seven point deficit with two touchdowns in the final 16 minutes to beat Ohio State 24 to 17. Fifth year senior quarterback Tom Brady found tight end Sean Thompson for an eight yard touchdown with 37 seconds left in the third quarter. The game winning scoring pass was caught by Marquise Walker with five minutes to go. An NCAA record 111,575 fans were on hand to see Michigan beat the Buckeyes 22 years ago this week. Well, that time machine shows that Michigan can get it done against Ohio State. It's going to be a tall order this coming week against the Buckeyes, but this football team, Michigan, has answered all the questions all year long. And at 10 and 1, you now ask the ultimate question Can you handle the Buckeyes? And I personally think they got as good a shot as anybody. Well, they do uh, because they match up real well. When you think about the, the defense that Michigan plays, putting pressure on C.J. Stroud, uh, that's going to be a big part of this. Trying to figure out how to defend Olave, Wilson, uh, and, and you know, and Jigbo, their, their third receiver that they found somewhere in the middle of the season. And Henderson, along, that running back. Yeah, and, and Master Teague had a, had a good day against Michigan State. So it's a very potent offense. Michigan has a defense that is very formidable, and you put those two things together, it's going to be a lot of fun and there's not many people that are going to pick Michigan to win this game but I can tell you what in the locker room in the coaching staff there's not a doubter in the bunch and the thing that's beautiful about it John Jansen and you know it and I know it it's nice to have the world back in order yeah. Michigan Ohio State playing for all the marbles isn't that wonderful yeah and just you know the opportunity to go to to Indy that's what Jim Harbaugh has been after that's what this program has been after uh, it's what so many of us football alumni have been after for this program to be able to be in this position going in into the Ohio State game and that Ohio State game being at home don't miss a minute of Inside Michigan Football next weekend when we go over Michigan, Ohio State, the 2021 version. Thanks so much for being with us tonight, and make sure you're with us next week for Inside Michigan Football. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. And by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store.